welcome to the next segment of steam and accessories and if you recall that previously we were discussing about the concept of economizer we had a discussion about the superheaters apart from this we discussed about the various other essential um, accessories and mountings attributed to the boiler including the pressure gauge including the tds sensors including the temperature gauge and a glass uh, viewing system etc in this particular uh, lecture we are going to discuss the uh, the essentials for attributed to the water quality of steam concept of water carry over external water treatment we will discuss in detail about the safety valve and how we can select the appropriate safety valve for the boiler in question we will discuss about the other safety devices including the seating and other uh, shear pinning system uh, we will discuss the concept of uh, condensate recovery discussed about uh, the importance of co condensate um, in the previous lectures we will discuss about that how we can recover and what are the essential for the condensate recovery system so let's start with the water for the boiler the operating objective for a steam boiler plant uh, this includes must have a safe operation they must have a maximum combustion output and heat transfer efficiency also they should uh, offer a minimum uh, maintenance and uh, it should have a long working life these are the some of the other essential aspect of a boiler now see we discussed that uh, the quality of the water used to produce uh, the steam in the boiler this have a profound effect on meeting the objective of the boiler uh, there is a need for boiler to operate under the various criteria now these criteria includes that it must have a freedom from scale and freedom from corrosion and chemical attack you see that in the previous lectures we discussed about the concept of scale how these scales are generated and how dangerous these scales are and how they are non efficient similarly apart from this scale the corrosion and chemical attack all these are also very important because some of the debris carry may carry the metal part and if you are using these steam steam uh, directly to any chemical reaction it may create a catalytic effect so all these things are extremely you can say uh, important uh so for good quality of steam the impurities in the boiler feed water they are not dealt properly if you are not dealing them properly then the carry over of a boiler that means the contamination of the steam with boiler water uh, boiler water solids into the steam system can occur and this may lead to problem elsewhere in the steam system as i discussed that if you are directly introducing to steam this steam into any chemical reaction uh, even um, the small small metal particles may participate in the reaction so uh, the removal of all such kind of things is quite essential they may contaminate the surface of the control walls um maybe by the deposition maybe by the corrosion erosion etc so this will affect their operation and reduce uh, their capacity now the contamination of uh, the heat transfer surface uh, of the process plant this will increase the thermal resistance and reduce the effectiveness of heat transfer and that is quite essential for the the maximization of, of efficiency concept uh sometimes they may restrict uh, the steam trap orifice and again it may create a problem because this, if a steam trap is not working properly then it will not sense the or it cannot distinguish between the steam and the water and that will be extremely dangerous for the boiler operation or the steam is distribution network so if there, there is a restriction in the steam trap orifice this will reduce the steam trap capacity and ultimately lead to the water logging of the plant and reduce the output let's talk about the carry over now this carry over can be caused by two factors one is the priming this is the ejection of boiler water into the steam take off and is generally due to one maybe uh, one or more of uh, reasons attributed to this one operating the boiler with the too high water level so again it's very dangerous because you are imparting excess amount of energy to produce the steam operating the boiler below the design pressure this increases the volume and velocity of the steam released from the water surface and sometimes it may be because of the excessive steam demand uh, second aspect is the foaming 
this is the formation of foam um, in the space between the water surface and the steam takeoff. Now, the greater the amount of foaming, the greater the problem which can be experienced. Now, there are certain indications and consequences of uh, foaming. Uh, one is that uh, water will trickle down from the steam connection uh, of the ga gauge glass and this makes it difficult to, to accurately determine the water level. So, it is just like this that this is your gauge glass and if uh, foam is uh, deposited over here, in that case it will be quite difficult for a person who is visualizing the the water level and uh, or sensing the, the, the water level through the sensor. In that case, it will be quite difficult for them to sense the accurate water level. And in that case, uh, uh, the results uh, may be extremely dangerous. Uh, another thing is that the level probes, uh, floats and differential per pressure cells, uh, they have the difficulty in accurately determining the water level. Uh, now, in case if any this such time of problem, alarms may be sounded and the burners may even uh, lock out. This will require the manual resetting of the boiler control panel before supply this can be re-established. Now, these problems may completely or in part due to the foaming in the boiler. However, if uh, uh, because foaming uh, is a, an endemic to boiler water. Now, sometimes uh, if you are having excessive agitation within the system, then it also increases the foaming because of the alteration in the, the surface energy. So, again uh, it, it causes a problem. Another uh, uh, the cause of uh, foaming is the hardness. Usually hard water does not form uh, foam. However, boiler water is deliberately softened to prevent the scale formation and this gives it uh, the propensity to foam. So, you have to be very careful and if you are imparting any kind of a chemical dose or providing the dosing, then you have to be very much aware about all the consequences. Sometimes colloidal substances, they are also very important. The contamination of a boiler water with the collides in suspension. Uh, for example, milk, this causes violent foaming. Colloidal particles, uh, those who are less than 0 0.0001 uh, millimeter in diameter and can pass through a normal filter. So, all these uh, are uh, need to be addressed. Uh, we have already discussed this uh, TDS uh, concept. The TDS level as the boiler water TDS increases, the steam bubbles become more stable and more reluctant to burst and separate. There are certain chemical controls like uh, um, uh, we, we may add certain anti-foaming agents or chemicals, these may be added to the boiler water. Now, these operates by breaking down the foam bubbles, that means they are the surface uh, active agents, etcetera. Uh, uh, however, these agents are not uh, effective when uh, treating foam caused by the suspended solids. So, the, the to control the uh, of a TDS, a balance has to be found between the uh, high TDS level uh, with its uh, you can say attendant economy of operation and a low TDS level which minimizes foaming. Sometimes, uh, see, uh, uh, we need to have some external water treatment uh, uh, protocols because uh, there are various sources of water, maybe the natural water, maybe the surface water, maybe the ground water, maybe the subsurface water, maybe uh, you, are, you are taking water from the, the river or a canal or uh, maybe municipal water. So, uh, you cannot uh, feed this uh, water directly to the boiler because there are certain inherent uh, impurities. Inherent impurities may be attributed to the hardness, may be attributed to the certain debris, may be attributed to the certain dissolved solids, etcetera. So, you need to go for uh, water treatment process and this is termed as the external water treatment. So, the external water treatment the processes can be listed like uh, reverse osmosis, lime soda softening, ion exchangers, demineralization. Now, these process or this process remove virtually all the salts 
and it involves the passing the raw material through, through the cation anion exchange resins or other chemical dosings as the case may be or as the case may require and this all depends on the impurities uh, inherent impurities in question. Uh, so, we are not going dis to discuss these, uh, um, uh, these water treatment protocols because we will address this thing in a separate section. Now, let us talk about uh, the safety walls in detail. Now, as you know that uh, the primary function of a safety valve is to protect the life and property as I discussed a previous example of a domestic pressure cooker. It is again a pressure vessel equipped with the two different type of a safety devices. Now, the principal type of device used to prevent the over pressure in plant is the safety or safety relief valve. The safety valve operates by releasing a volume of a fluid from within the plant when a predetermined maximum pressure is reached and thereby reducing the excess pressure in a safe manner. You see that uh, in uh, when we were discussing about uh, the boiler, the boiler rating there are three different type of uh, pressure, working pressure, bursting pressure, hydraulic pressure. So, if uh, it is uh, crosses the working pressure limit, then always the safety device is actuated and uh, the excess pressure can be released in a safe manner. Now, pressure excess can be generated in a number of different situations. This may be like imbalance of a fluid flow rate caused by inadvertently closed or open isolation valve on a process vessel. Failure of uh, uh, cooling system which allows vapor or fluid to expand compressed air or electrical power failure to control the instrumentation, there may be certain transient pressure surges, there may be certain exposure to the plant fire, heat exchanger tube failure, uncontrollable exothermic reaction or thermal runaway reaction in the plant, ambient temperature changes. Now, usually uh, when we talk about uh, the safety devices, so a valve which automatically without the assistance of any energy other than that the fluid in question discharges a certified amount of uh, a fluid so as to prevent a predetermined safe pressure this being exceeded and which is designed to reclose and prevent the further flow of fluid after normal pressure condition of the service have been restored. Now, these are the two essentials of safety valve. So, when the pressure is beyond the working pressure, then the safety valve actuated. So, this can be uh, achieved by the variety of uh, uh, method, but if uh, the original desirable pressure is restored, then automatically safety valve should be closed so that uh, the precious fluid or precious steam cannot be go beyond the periphery of uh, the boiler or the, the process in question. Now, this is uh, the anatomy of uh, safety valve. Here you see that uh, this is uh, the the cap and this is the spring adjuster to meet out the, the, the any kind of a fluctuation within the, the system. This is the spring and based on the spring constant or a kx this usually works and this is this is spring is housed in a system that is called the bonnet through which a protective shell can be designed. This is the main body. And uh, this uh, here you see this is the blow down ring and this is the main thing that is the disc and this is uh, the seat. So, usually the disc is seated over the seat. So, when the pressure mounted or pressure is above then this based on the spring constant uh, the spring usually compressed and the excess steam can be go out. And when the desired pressure achieved, then it this disc can be reseated to the, uh, the seat and uh, the, the flow of the, the fluid can be seized off. Now, here you see that uh, two different type of uh, um, safety valves, here you, this, uh, you, you see that this is the spring and here this is the seat and a disc. And you can adjust the, uh, the, the things with the spring adjuster. Now, let us talk about some, uh, some basic operation of a safety valve. 
the foremost operation that is called the lifting. Now, when uh, the inlet static pressure rises above the set pressure of the safety valve, the disc will begin to lift of the seat. Now, as soon as the spring starts to compress uh, as you, we discussed uh, in this particular figure, uh, figure, the spring force will increase and this means that pressure would have to continue to rise before any further lift can occur and for there uh, to be any significant flow through the wall. Now, the additional pressure riser, here you see that it is a more closer look, this is the disc and this is the seat. Now, the additional uh, pressure rise required before the safety valve will discharge at the rate, its rated capacity is called the over pressure. Now, next is the reseating because once uh, you restore the normal operation condition, the valve required to be closed again. But uh, since the large area of a disc is, is still exposed to the fluid, the valve will not close until the pressure has dropped below the original set, uh, set pressure. So, you have to look this particular equilibrium in between the disc and the, the boiler pressure. Sometimes people ask about the material of construction of um, these uh, safety valves, except when uh, um, the safety valve are discharging, the only part that are wetted by the process fluid uh, are the inlet tract or nozzle and the disc. And uh, usually disc and seats they are direct in touch with the, uh, with the working fluid. Now, since uh, these safety valve operate uh, infrequently under normal conditions, all other components can be manufactured from standard materials for most uh, applications. Uh, there are however, you can say the several exceptions in which uh, special material have to be used and this includes sometimes if you, you, you may require the cryogenic application in that case the expansion and other things uh, you need to look into. Then sometimes you are, you are handling the corrosive fluids, uh, so you cannot make your disc or safety valve uh, uh, those who are very much reactive with those fluids. Now another aspect is that where the contamination of discharge fluid is not permitted then you have to equip some more. Um, more uh, additional attachment to the safety devices. Now, when the valve is, uh, discharges into the manifold that contains uh, corrosive media discharged by another valve. The principal uh, pressure containing component of safety valves are normally constructed from different metal, uh, materials like bronze. They are commonly used for small screwed valve for general duty in steam, air and hot water application that may be used up to uh, 15 bar. Then the cast iron, usually uh, they are used in extensively for uh, ASME, American Society for Mechanical Engineering type of a valve. They have designed their own coats and this the use is typically limited to 17 bar. Then the cast iron or a cast steel commonly used on high pressure uh, valves say up to 40 bar. Uh, process type valves are usually made from a cast steel uh, body with an uh, austenitic uh, uh, full nozzle type construction. The selection of, now question arises that how we can have because we are having a large sized uh, uh, galaxy of uh, steam uh, safety valves and we are ha having a number of choices. Then question ar arises that what should be the guiding parameter through which we can have an appropriate safety valve selection. So, the selection of a specific type of safety valve is usually tutored by several factors. One is the cost and obviously it is uh, one of the key factor. Um, for consideration. So, when uh, selecting a safety valve for non-critical operation, it is uh, you can say most of uh, most obvious uh, consideration. Now, when making cost comparison, it is imperative to consider the capacity of the valve as well as the nominal size. Another thing is that the type of disposal system, valve with an open bonnet, these can be used on a steam air or a non-toxic gas. But if discharge to the atmosphere other than uh, through the discharge system is acceptable. A lifting lever is often specified in these type of application as you see in the figure. Then the wall construction a semi nozzle type uh, construction which should be used for non-toxic non-corrosive type media uh, at moderate pressures. Whereas, valve with a full nozzle type construction, they are typically used uh, in the process industry for corrosive me media or uh, for extremely high pressure. 
So, if uh, we are using the corrosive fluid uh, or a high temperature a special material of construction this may also be required. Another uh, um, uh, foremost uh, uh, criteria for the safety wall selection is the operating characteristics. Performance requirement they may vary according to application and the wall must be selected accordingly. For steam boilers, a small overpressure is required, usually say 3 to uh, 4 5 percent. For most other application, 10 percent uh, overpressure is required. Uh, now, very important part of uh, safety wall selection is the approval. So, for many valve application, the end user will state the required code or standard for the construction and performance of the wall. As you noticed that in the boiler, we are having the different type of a code and a standards based on the country to country, reason to reason. Similarly, we are having the similar type of codes and uh, standards for the safety wall. Now, this is usually accompanied by the requirement for approval by an independent authority to guarantee the conformance uh, um, with the required standard. Uh, apart from this, there are certain other alternative plant protection device. You see that uh, if we are comparing the things with our domestic pressure cooker, where we are having the two different safety devices. One is uh, the safety valve, another one is uh, the safety vent, which is sometimes uh, referred as a whistle. Similarly, uh, in um, all the boiler house or steam power generation plant, there are uh, other alternative plant protection device and these devices are equipped with such type of a different things. So, uh, the thing is that uh, the safety walls are by far the most common devices uh, used for the plant protection in a steam system. There are several other devices available to protect plant from over pressure condition. Um, some of them you can use uh, in place of a safety valve. Most of them they have own unique application and indeed some devices such as bursting disc. This may be used to, uh, to complement the safety valve. Um, another uh, thing is the weight, weighted pallet and uh, previously uh, various boilers they are using the counterweight safety valves. Um, now, they, now uh, these are largely superseded by the spring loaded safety valves. Now, here the concept is uh, uh, common. You are having a weights and uh, this is the steam generation unit or boiler. Now, if uh, and this uh, particular uh, seating or reseating arrangement is usually uh, uh, complemented or supplemented by these counterweights. So, in case if there is any uh, uh, excess pressure, this lever may go downward and by this way the, uh, the seat or disc can be open and the excess steam can be discharged to the atmosphere. Now, we were talking about the bursting or a rupture disc. Now, this consists of um, an elastomeric membrane or thin metal disc that will burst uh, at a set pressure relieving any over pressure and usually sometimes it also give an edge towards the high temperature system. If uh, the melting point of these elastomeric membrane or disc operating temperature is more than the melting point of these elastomeric membranes, they may melt down to release the excessive pressure as well as the temperature. Now, they can be used by themselves on many applications. They are used in conjunction with the, the safety valve. It is just like the domestic pressure cooker. Now, a rupture disc. Um, this can be installed either on inlet or outlet side of safety valve. Here you see that uh, uh, the fusible plug device or a safety device just like your domestic pressure cooker. Now, here you see the these consist of a plug with a lower melting point uh, than the maximum operating temperature of the system that is protected. So, basically it is meant for the temperature protecting uh, protection device. Now, this is uh, the simple example, you can screw it, 
this is uh, the plug body and this is the fusible alloy. Sometimes elastomers are also being used. So, if uh, you may experience, if you are experiencing the excessive temperature, then this uh, fusible alloy or elastomer may melt down and excessive pressure can be released like this. Sometimes uh, the breaking or a shear pin devices are also being used. Now, usually a breaking pin device is a pressure relief device actuated by inlet static pressure and designed to function by the breakage of a load carrying section of a pin which supports a pressure or a containing member. Now, the force of over pressure forces the pin to buckle out and uh, valve to open. Uh, the wall can then be reseated after pressure is removed and a new pin need to be installed over there. Now, these devices are usually installed on a low pressure application and large gas distribution system and that is why because some, uh, every time you need to install a new pin that is why they have a very limited applications. Now, um, in last uh, we are talking about the condensate recovery. Now, usually when we talk about the condensate recovery or a condensate, uh, just go to um, as basic concept that uh, steam is usually generated for one or two reason. One is to produce uh, electrical power, for example, in power generation plant or cogeneration plant and supply of uh, heat to for heating and uh, process system. We discussed a couple of things, um, these uh, things uh, in previous lectures. Now, a uh, thing is that uh, how this condensate um, is uh, recovered or how this condensate is formed. So, usually when you are extracting the mechanical energy or when you are extracting the heat energy, then the steam loss is latent heat and it convert into uh, uh, water. Now, since uh, it, it has two valuable things in it, one is the heat because obviously when you are condensing the steam, uh, obviously it will have the same temperature, the condensate will have the same temperature as of a steam and second thing is the water value because we discussed that uh, uh, whenever you are using the water in the boiler, then obviously you need to perform some water treatment or water conditioning, it always costs the value. So, you cannot discharge that particular condensate as such to the atmosphere. So, based on this thing, every steam distribution network is usually equipped with the condensate recovery lines. Now, how we can quantify this uh, condensate recovery? So, when a kilogram of steam condenses completely, a kilogram of condensate is formed at the same temperature and pressure. So, usually an efficient steam system will reuse all these condensate. Failure to reclaim and reuse condensate make a no financial, technical or environmental sense. You see 1 kilogram of steam condensate and you must have a 1 kilogram of condensate. So, uh, if uh, you are giving up, I mean after giving up its latent heat to, uh, to the process, the steam turns into the water and containing only sensible heat. This is the usual thermodynamic phenomena. Now, an efficient uh, steam system will collect this condensate uh, and either return it to a deaerator Obviously, we discussed about the concept of deaerator to remove uh, any entrapped air because air does not carry any, any heat value and a boiler feed tank or use it in another process. Feed tank means uh, you can use this particular condensate at a higher temperature uh, to maintain the, the water level as well as uh, to preheat the, the system also. Now, only when there is a, a real risk of a contamination should condensate, uh, condensate not to be returned to the boiler, maybe some contamination through the corrosive chemicals or maybe some other contaminants. In that case, it needs to be uh, sent for, for uh, effluent treatment plant. Now, when we talk about the condensate return, an effective condensate return recovery system usually uh, collects the hot condensate from the steam using the equipment and return it to the boiler feed system 
and can pay itself for remarkably short period of time because the heat value as well as the uh, the the water value always very you can say the attractive things in the condensate recovery. A simple steam and condensate circuit with a condensate returning to the boiler tank must be properly designed. And you can see here, it is a very simple diagram uh, for a steam and condensate recovery. You see here we are producing the steam and this steam is being utilized to the various uh, open pan or pan vessel for heating purpose and the process steam. Now, here you see that uh, these are the condensate recovery lines. And these condensate recovery lines, they are connected to the different type of a system and it, it is usually returned to uh, the feed tank. So, by this way, it is a simplified way for representing the condensate recovery line. Now, question arises, why return condensate and uh, reuse it? I told you that uh, this may be because of the financial reason because uh, every drop usually cost because you are demineralizing, deionizing the things. Then water charges because sometimes you are taking water either from the municipal corporation or a ground water or from river or a canal or there are a number of sources of water where from where you can get it. But ultimately the pumping cost and other cost they are also uh, quite high. So, uh, water charges are again there. So, you need to have a proper water balance to minimize these uh, uh, losses. Now, another uh, aspect is the effluent restriction that is attributed to the temperature restriction. Effluent res uh, because uh, you see that uh, we discussed that uh, when condensate forms, so usually it, uh, it is this, uh, at the same temperature uh, which uh, the steam has. So, you cannot discharge uh, uh, this effluent, uh, this water to the atmosphere because of high temperature. Then uh, obviously, when it carries the, the good quality of water applicable to boiler, it carries the, the good quantum of uh, heat because of uh, uh, steam system. You can uh, maximize the boiler output as well as the boiler feed water quality when you return these condensate to the, the system. So, uh, by this way we are summing up uh, this particular uh, lecture and we here you, we discussed the various aspects of a condensate, we discussed about uh, the safety valve, anatomy of safety valve and if you wish to have further studies we have enlisted uh, um, three, four different references so for your convenience, you can go through all these references. Thank you very much.